Ugh, I hate that dream. <gasps> I guess Eileen went to class. I probably should too. Nah. Hi, cat. Feel free to use my computer while I'm away. My password is angel love, without the quotes. If you call my friend Dave at 555-2492, he can set you up with some software. I'll be back in a few hours, super psyched about the investigation. E. P.S. No gum on the keyboard, please. Remember the last time? Oh, please, like she actually uses the space bar? Shit, looks like she forgot to write down the username. Oh well, shouldn't be too hard to guess. I think it's just some combination of her first and last name. I'm Kathy. Eileen said to call you about some software. Ellie who? Eileen. Red hair, glasses, speaks so fast her gums ache. Oh, right. I thought her name was Errol. Figured it was kind of a weird name for a girl. You must have a hearing disorder. You must have a thinking disorder. Ha 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 ha, burn! Wow. Just wow. So, uh, the software? Oh, yeah. No, can't. Not really. Ugh, I knew she was full of shit. Nah, I mean, sure, I used to be able to get pirated software, but not anymore. There was this misunderstanding and my network privileges were revoked. Me and Clyde, the campus IT guy, don't really see eye to eye. We used to play bocce together and let's just say he is one sore loser. Can't you just hack your way back in somehow? Isn't that what you do? He blocked the ethernet port in my room. I don't even have physical access. Don't you ever leave your room? Use a computer in the library or something. Aren't they connected to the network? No, there are cameras in there. Clyde is just waiting for me to make a move so he can get me expelled. Can't you just patch things up with the guy? No way, he's such an ass. He even thinks TNG is better than the original series. He thinks the what is better than the what? I know, right? Can you believe that guy? You call yourself a hacker? Just use your brain for Christ's sake. Let's figure this out. Wow, you're so sassy, Nancy Drew. Well, okay, only an admin account can change the access port. The only way to even theoretically crack one would be if Clyde logged on to a machine to which we have unrestricted physical access. And, ooh, I got an idea. I'm not gonna like this. Well, what you could do is intentionally crash your PC. That sounds especially stupid. Well, not crash it, crash it. Just crash it a little, then call Clyde. Clyde will come over to fix it. If you're lucky, then he'll log onto the network using his admin account. Afterwards, you can use some of my tools to find and crack the password locally. Worth a shot, I guess. Okay, you can come over and set it up. No way. I have severe IBS. It just wouldn't work. IBS? What the hell is that? Uh, you seriously don't want to know. I'll have my buddy drop off everything you need. It's not rocket science. You do what I ask, and I'll get you some juicy software. Quid pro quo, Clarice. Whatever, weirdo. We'll see. A thick white envelope. My electric guitar. Got it cheap from a lesbian I met at a concert. Good times. Nah, it's no fun when there's no one around to annoy with it. Help me get rid of my last two roommates. These must be the instructions from Dave. 
There was a floppy disk in there with a note taped to the back. It's labeled boot. One, boot your computer using the blue floppy. Two, use the corrupt MBR utility to crash the file system of the computer. Take the floppy out and reboot. Three, call Clyde at 555-8181, tell him your computer crashed and give him the error code on the screen. He'll come over and have a look. It shouldn't take too long for him to fix. Four, now comes the crucial part. You need to somehow make him log on with his admin account. Five, reboot and retrieve the admin credentials using the blue floppy. Six, reboot and log on using Clyde's admin account. Seven, look for some kind of tool to remotely open my ethernet port. Dorm B, room eight. That's it, and remember, if you mess up somewhere, just call Clyde and he'll have to take care of it. It's his job after all. I'm no geek, but I know how to use one. A computer, that is, not a geek. All right, time for some expert help. IT, this is Clyde speaking. How can I help you? Hi, I need you to come and fix my roommate's computer. What seems to be the problem? It won't start up. There's some kind of system failure with an error code on the screen. Probably a hard drive failure. Which room are you in? Dorm A, room 5. I'll be there in a few minutes. Thanks. Hey, Clyde from IT. Hi, come in. My, oh my, now how did this happen? I have no idea. It was like this when I started it up this morning. Hmm, let's have a look. And presto, good as new. That's perfect. Could, could you try logging on real quick just to make sure it works? You go ahead. I'll wait. Yeah, that worked. Thanks. No problem. Let me know if you have any more trouble. Shit. I have to come up with a way to force him to log on. One. Boot your computer, you two. You three. 
Call Clyde at 5-4. Now comes the crucial part. You need to somehow make him log on with his admin account. Five, reboot, six, seven, that's it. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. IT, this is Clyde speaking. How can I help you? I, uh, kind of forgot my username. Well, it's real easy. It's the first letter of your first name followed by your last name, so Jane Doe would be J Doe. All right, sounds easy enough. Never mind. Suit yourself. And presto, good as new. That's perfect. Could could you try logging on real quick just to make sure it works? You go ahead. I'll wait. Oh, now look what I did. For crying out loud. <sighs> Let me try to log in with my account. Okay, everything seems to be in order. I've unlocked your account. Please, try not to break anything else. Oh, I'll try. Phase one complete. One, boot your compute two. You three, call Clyde at five four. Now comes the crucial five. Reboot and retrieve the admin credentials using the blue floppy. Six, reboot and log on using Clyde's admin account. Seven, look for some kind of tool to remotely open my ethernet port. Dorm B, room eight. That's it, and rem
All right, that should do it. Guess what? You got it? Hang on. Oh man, I could kiss you! Ahem, figuratively that is. I am so gonna get back at Clyde now. What are those admin credentials, by the way? Not telling, buddy. Saving those for a rainy day. Huh, I suppose this nice floppy I've prepared for you stays in my room then. Sure, then I'll just have to log back on and click that pretty little lock icon again. Now this is just emotional blackmail. Quid pro quo, Dave. Fine. I'll have it dropped off at your room. God damn, you're like a she Clyde. A Clyde Eck. Huh. That is the worst insult I have ever heard. Later, Dave. A thick white envelope. I'll just get rid of these notes now. I don't need them anymore. This must be the software I need. There was a floppy disk inside. It's labeled tools. It's labeled tools. I'm no geek, but I know how to use a com
What the hell is that? Ball lightning? I'll print the whole picture for now, but there's probably more to find. That shape has to be significant somehow. I don't want to print that part of the image. Unusual flower over there though. Never seen anything like it. Maybe worth printing? Good idea, but I should probably zoom in all the way. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's all there is to find in this picture. I'll just get rid of the original picture now, since I have the restored version anyway. Strange. Now that I look at them, the lights remind me of something I picked up yesterday. It's some advanced scanner thingy. It can scan pictures, tapes, all sorts of stuff. Okay, Erica Wade, let's see if we can't motivate you to hear me out. I should probably greet my intended recipient first. I should probably greet my intended recipient first.
All right, the forged message should now be at the end of the original tape. Wow, the church logo looks pretty similar to the smoky lights. I might have to visit them after all. Oh, hello there, Mildred. Hi yourself, Agatha. What, how'd you? Oh, never mind. I know your social security number too. Oh, God. Soon you'll start stealing my clothes and then walk around and then pretending to be me. Who says I haven't done that already? Okay, I admit, that's pretty funny. So, anyway, how did things go with Dave? Pretty good. I had to sabotage your computer. You had to what? Oh, chill out, It was just a tiny little thing. I just needed an excuse for the IT guy to come by so I could steal his password. Clyde? But he's so nice. Why do you want to steal his password? It's a long story. Wow, they're hypnotic. Looks like a will o' the wisp. You know, the spirit of the forest. Now, that's just silly, Eileen. There has to be a more reasonable explanation for them. Hey, there's nothing silly about forest spirits. You should talk to Meadow, my Wiccan friend. She's really opened my eyes about these sort of things. Isn't that the same Meadow who had an intimate relationship with the tree outside her dorm? Oh, come on. That was just a phase. Trust me, I've been through every phase in the book. That definitely isn't one of them. So anyway, is there anything I can do to help? Well, my side of the room is starting to get a bit messy. There's always that. Haha, <laughs> I meant with the investigation, silly. I guess you could try to find out more about these lights. Maybe figure out where that picture was taken? Sounds good. I know exactly where to start. Oh, and yeah, feel free to keep using my computer. I don't need it right now. All right, I think I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way to motivate Erica Wade to talk to me. Okie dokie. Hello, Erica. It's your father. Call Kathy Rain and give her what she wants. Bye. You've reached Erica Wade. Leave a message after the beep. Hi, Erica. This is Kathy Rain. I spoke to your father. He asked me to get in touch with you and said he would call ahead. You can reach me at 555-8352. Bye. Your move, Erica.
Now that's some out-of-the-box thinking. Yep, just might be silly enough to work. Well, time for a break. Gotta eat something before I pass out. Okie dokie. I'll stay here and keep digging. All right, see you in a bit. Hey. Hey. So, any progress with the search? Yeah, I was able to identify that flower. It's called the Red Scythe, or Rosia falcus. I discovered that there was a small nature reserve near Conwell Springs, which was established in 89. The Red Scythe is on their list of endangered plants. I made a photocopy of the botany book page in case you want it later. That's something. I should go check it out. Maybe I can narrow down the place where that picture was taken. And, uh, good work, Eileen. Happy to help. So what... Oh, hang on. I'll go get that. Okie dokie. Hello? This is Erica Wade calling for Kathy Rain. Speaking. Miss Rain, uh, this is terribly awkward. I realize now how rude I was before. I wanted to apologize and ask if there is anything I can do. Apology accepted. You can start by answering a few questions. Very well. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather that night in 81? Not really, no. But what I do know is how it destroyed father. It did? Oh, yes. The two of them were great friends once. And when Joseph was hurt, they hadn't been talking for some time. Father always hoped they would be able to reconnect one day. They kept putting it off, believing they had time. But in the end, it never happened. So, what were things like back when they were still good friends? Oh, they were like peas in a pod. <laughs> always sharing their war stories and, and laughing together. In a way, Joseph became the uncle I never had. He was around a lot when Father went out on business trips. Later on, I, I even met you a few times, when you were just a baby. I don't remember any of that. Oh, no matter, you were so little then. Erica, I have to ask, why were you so defensive on the phone earlier when I tried to reach out? Oh, I don't know, Kathy. Our families haven't been in touch for a long time. I don't remember exactly when it happened, but we all started drifting apart. My guess is that it had to do with Father's growing wealth. Friendship needs common ground, and we started living in different worlds. What happened to your grandfather was the final nail in the coffin. Father just couldn't bear seeing him like that, neither alive nor dead. What do you know about Lily Myers? She was a young artist who lived somewhere in Conwell Springs. Killed herself, if I recall correctly. Dreadful thing. But other than that, not much. We never knew the family. Do you recognize the nickname Cocky? It may be an Air Force call sign. I can't say that I do. Father had many friends in the Air Force, but no one I can recall by that name. What can you tell me about Mr. Wade? My father is a great man. He has so many ideas, so much left to realize, which makes it hurt so much more to see him like this. See him like what? The illness, and everything, of course. Right. Yeah, it must be hard. Oh, yes, indeed. I wish he wouldn't be so stubborn with his treatment. He could go to any state-of-the-art hospital, but insists on being treated in that backwater clinic in Conwell Springs. The community clinic in the middle of town? Yes. It's like he's given up and is just waiting for the inevitable to happen. What do you know about Lily Meyer's art? Oh, that little girl had a twisted mind, let me tell you that. Oh, my father used to have a few pieces of hers in his collection. Horrible things. I couldn't understand why he ever decided to procure them in the first place. You say, used to have. Did he get rid of the paintings? Oh, either that, or, or he put them in storage somewhere. I haven't seen them for years. I never bothered to ask him why. Glad to be rid of them, quite frankly. 
Do you know anything about the Church of the Holy Trinity? It's the one and only church in Conwell Springs. I was baptized there, and I married my husband there. Anything out of the ordinary about them? Oh, not really. They seem like a typical church to me. Okay, that's all I needed. Very well. Feel free to call back if you have any more questions. All right. Wade is in Conwell Springs. He's being treated in the clinic. That was Erica Wade. Her father is being treated at the clinic in Conwell Springs. Being treated? He's sick? Looks that way. Small miracle they managed to keep it out of the press. Yeah, I suppose you are returning to talk to him? It'll have to be tomorrow. It's quite late for that now. I suppose. Scrabble? Oh, you're so on. I will crush you. Turning your pawn into a queen, is that the plan, buddy boy? You know me, I'm always playing the long game, old friend. That may be, but you're running out of pieces. First you lost your queen, then your knight. All that matters is the king. Delusional as always. The king is dead. Long live the king, check. <laughs> 